Hi, this is Michaela with Honest Talk Radio. Honest Talk Radio is a space where we will be sharing the good, the bad, and the ugly in real, raw, and honest conversations to try and do our part to reduce the amount of shame, guilt, and judgment that so many of us women face today. Our hope is that through these conversations, you'll feel supported and encouraged in everything that you do in life. This episode of Honest Talk Radio is brought to you by Jason Martin Presents. Are you thinking of changing jobs or even careers? You are in good company because so are almost half of working Americans. One of the reasons for this massive dissatisfaction is that people don't know how to leverage their talents and own the power they have in the workplace. Jason Martin has been helping workers do just that for almost 30 years as a master trainer and executive coach for some of the most respected brands in America. Now Jason is bringing his Ready for Anything career fitness program to Honest Talk International. Why wait for change to happen to you? Take control of your career. If you're ready for change, you need to be ready for anything. Check out jasonmartinpresents.com for more information. Coming up on this week's episode of Honest Talk Radio, I'll be talking about self-care. I want to share with you three reasons why you need to implement self-care in your life and five ways to make it happen. Later on in the show, we'll be talking to our guest, Lauren Fonville, who is a Reiki practitioner, yoga instructor, and energy healer, among a lot of other things. All right, let's get started. Okay, y'all, the three reasons that you need to think about self-care and what that really means is that it is imperative for your mental health, emotional health, and physical health. All right, so what do I mean by that? First of all, let's tackle the mental health. When I'm talking about mental health, this is starting with the way that you're thinking about yourself, the way that you talk to yourself, that inner monologue. Because let's just face it, we too often will be really quick to judge ourselves. Oh, I'm just not good at that. Or, oh, I could never do that. Or maybe you say something like, I failed again because I didn't get up to go to the gym at 5.30 in the morning. Whatever it is, you need to take time for yourself so that you can feel confident and believe in yourself like so many other people believe in you. All right. Number two, emotional well-being. Self-care is so important for your emotional well-being because we can, we can let all of the chaos of the world in and not know how to manage it. And then it just is like building bricks on top of you and you're just feeling weighted down. So if you take a few minutes every day or a couple times a week to pour into yourself emotionally, Let yourself cry. Maybe you want to watch a chick flick that you can just get all those tears out and all those emotions. Then you're going to feel like you can face whatever the world has coming at you. And number three, physically. All right, yes, exercise is important. Being active is important. But what I really mean about physical self-care is a lot of times when we do not take care of ourselves, and we run dry, we, those things come out physically. We get sick more often. You feel drained. You don't have the energy to get up and go work out because you're constantly depleted. So those are the three reasons why it's so important for you to stop and take care of yourself Self-care does not equal selfish. It's actually quite the opposite. If you do a little bit something for yourself, one, the people around you are going to see that. And they too will follow in your footsteps. And two, you will feel so much better mentally, physically, and emotionally that you will have that energy, that desire, that passion to continue to serve and do what it is that you love to do. So, ladies, do you hear me? You need to take time for yourself. It is absolutely imperative. 
Earlier I told you I was going to give you five ways that you can fit in self-care into your schedule. Number one, prioritize. Make yourself a priority. Why is it that everybody else matters more than you do? You matter. Prioritize your time to fit in a few minutes of self-care, an hour of self-care, a day of self-care so that you can feel re-energized and motivated and excited again. Number two, simplify. Less is more. Sometimes we're our own worst enemies. I know I am. I will fill our calendars with activities for the kids, sports, uh, piano lessons, you name it, the calendars, the days are full. But they don't all have to happen. I can prioritize and simplify and everybody is going to be okay. Number three, learn how to say no. One of the best books I've ever read in my life is called Your Best Yes by Lisa Turkhurst. And I'm probably saying her name wrong, but you get the idea. When I realize that if I say no to something, that I'm not letting someone down, but instead I'm giving somebody else a chance to say yes and to give their best yes, because let's face it, if you're saying yes to everything, you're not showing up to each of those things at 100%. So learn how to say no. You'll be better off for it. Number four, make a plan. Have a schedule. It is the path to success is to have a plan. Just like I talk about on Wednesday nights with Sanjay, having a meal plan sets you up for nutritional success throughout the week. So does having a self-care plan. Schedule it in. Put it down on paper so that you can hold yourself accountable. Tell somebody that you're doing it so they can hold you accountable. And number five, don't be afraid to ask for help. I have no idea why that so many women feel like we have to do it on our own. But they, the old adage is there for a reason. They say it takes a village to raise a family. Don't be afraid to ask for help because chances are there's someone else out there that needs your help and they're scared to ask. And you, if you found out they needed your help, you would feel great that they asked you. So do that. Do that for yourself. Ask for help. Allow people in so that you don't have to carry it all on your own. So again, five ways to fit in self-care. Number one, prioritize. Number two, simplify. Number three, learn how to say no. Number four, make a schedule. And number five, ask for help. It's now time to welcome our guest for today's show. She's a life coach, a Reiki practitioner, yoga teacher, mom, and a military spouse. So I'd like to welcome Lauren to this episode of Honest Talk Radio. Hi, Lauren. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here today. We're so excited that you're here. I can't wait to hear more about what you do and how you do it because, um, I have to admit, I, I'm not all that familiar with the Reiki practice, so okay. I'm very excited. Um, first off, how about you tell us a little bit about who you are and who you love and what brings what brings you joy? Sure. So I am a mom first and foremost. I love my babies and, and my husband. My family is my world, and I I do everything for them. Um, <laughs> I am a Reiki practitioner and a lot of people, you know, might not be familiar with what that is, like like you were just saying. And so Reiki is a ancient form of Japanese energy healing. Mm -hmm. And it is a way to help um, identify energetic blocks in your body and move them and move them out. Um, 
one way I like to describe it is like if you think, I don't know how many people are familiar with the chakras, but the chakras, uh, as a yoga teacher, that's obviously something that I talk about a lot with my students. Yeah. But the chakras are, you know, energy centers within your body. And if you think of those as um, glowing balls of light, mm -hmm. and then you think of the light coming in through the crown of your head. So you have one at the crown of your head, at your third eye, at your throat, at your heart, your solar plexus, which is above your um, belly button and um, below your belly button at your sacral chakra and then your root chakra. And if you think of all of those as energy centers, as glowing balls of light and then a, and a string of light coming from the crown of your head going all the way through and everything's moving, everything's happy, happy and you're healthy, then you're in a state of health. But if you are um, someone who, you know, maybe with, with your, if you have a job outside of the house or even when you're, when you're at home with your kids, mm -hmm. um, if, you're, if you deal with stress, how you deal with stress, um, you might think of it like, you know, maybe if somebody at work is telling you to do something um, and you're already stressed out that, and you don't speak up, there could be a blockage in your throat chakra. And so, you know, over time, these things build up. And if we don't express how we, how we want to, you know, how, how we are feeling, then it gets shoved down and shoved down. And, you know, you can start to manifest these things physically. Maybe, you know, some people get stressed and they get stomach aches. Some people get stressed and, um, you know, they have pain in their, in their back. And so, Reiki is a way to help move that energy before you get to that state where you're physically, where you're physically in pain. Okay. And so I know that that, that can be, you know, hard for people to understand because energy isn't something that you can necessarily see, but it's mm -hmm. something that you, you know, it's something that you feel, right? So like if you, with your kids, like if, if your kid, if your child is upset, you know, and even if they're not crying, but they're just sitting there, you can tell, you can feel it. Same yeah. thing with your husband or your spouse after a tough day of work, if you come home and you, you can just feel that energy. And so it's, it's about, you know, tapping into that and really helping to move things through so that you, you don't feel stuck. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. I just last week, um, Friday, as a matter of fact, I was, uh, that energy level was de completely depleted and so much so like I, it kind of came out of nowhere. I was, I got up that morning, I went for a run, I felt good. And then the rest of the day, something was just weighing on me and I just moving from one space in my house to the next, like I literally just felt like I couldn't pick, I just couldn't pick myself up, but I couldn't put words to it either. I didn't, you know, my husband kept asking me what's wrong. Like, I don't know. I wish I knew. I just don't have, I just felt depleted. Yeah. And that, and that happens when we aren't taking care of ourselves or we, you know, skip a few days of, of our self-care routine. I mean, I, I've gotten to a point where I do have a pretty good, you know, regimented self-care routine, but, yeah. but of course, you know, life happens, things get in the way. And, and sometimes I, I don't get to do my meditation or my yoga and that same sort of thing will happen. It's, it's mm -hmm. totally, you know, it's totally common that if you're not, you know, pouring into yourself and taking care of yourself, then suddenly you can, you know, really feel that energy be depleted. And, and then you aren't showing up as your, your best self mm -hmm. for, for everyone that you love. Exactly. So as I mentioned um, in the intro, you're a life coach, a Reiki practitioner, a yoga teacher, a mom, and a military wife. Um, tell us how you got to where you are today. Yeah. Um, so my background is definitely, I, I, it has, has shifted. My background is in, was in marketing. I've worked in, I worked in corporate marketing for 15 years. And, um, about two years ago, it was when we most recently found out about my husband's deployment. And that really set me on a path of, of, um, self-love, self-healing and, and this energy work. Mm -hmm. I, I first started yoga when my husband deployed the first time, which was 15 years ago when we first got married. And throughout uh, our marriage, like whenever anything has been tough in life, I find mm -hmm. myself going back to yoga. And so when we got the news about this deployment, 
I was at a yoga class. I went, I went the next day to a yoga class. And that, uh, that ultimately led me to taking a yoga teacher training, which uh, led me into studying more deeply Reiki and, and then ultimately starting coaching because it's because I would do these Reiki sessions that were, you know, one, one off sessions. And of course, teaching my, my yoga students. And I just felt like uh, the, the sessions would go great. And, and then it would just be over. And I felt like these people needed more, they needed more support. It was like, wait, don't leave yet. There's still more to talk about, you know? And so that's why I created a, a coaching program that, that offers more of that support. Is your coaching program solely um, in person and no, it's virtual. Uh, everything is virtual. We, we meet on video chat once, once a week. And, uh, and it's a combination of energy work. So Reiki healing and meditation work to really help bring people home and uh, home to themselves, as I always like to say, because I truly believe that you need to have clear energy, mm-hmm. clear and flowing energy to really then be able to identify what it is you truly want to manifest into your life and, and working with my clients to do that, whether that's, you know, starting a business or if it's simply to take that time for yourself to, to feel good. I love that. I love that a lot. Um, how do you how do you do how do you do the energy work on a you know video conference call as opposed to being able to see the person and get right. them? so I will be able to see them on the on the video call mm-hmm. and uh, the thing is with Reiki is that energy knows no time or space okay so that's why it can be done um, it can be done virtually and it's really a lot of fun and I lately really seem to be uh, working with or attracting a lot of people who are not familiar with Reiki, don't know what it is, but then after talking about it, they're like, oh, that's, it's intriguing. It, it's definitely yeah. intriguing to them. And, um, and so then when we have the first session, I, you know, every Reiki practitioner there does their sessions a little bit differently. I like to speak during my, during my sessions. I like to share what it is that I'm feeling. Um, mm-hmm. It can, it can be, um, you know, certain feeling like feelings of strength or, you know, different, different visions will come to me during a session. And I just like to share, share it as I move through the session. Um, people will f- report feeling, you know, waves of energy through their body. And they're like, what, what is that? What is that? Or, or tingling? I'm like, that is just your energy. It's energy moving, you know, or even cool, coolness. It's just, it's really, it's exciting for me to see somebody who maybe hasn't really been in touch with their own energy to really be like, whoa, like, what is that? I'm like, that is your energy. Like, how cool is that? That you can really feel it and kind of, and, and feel it move. And there, there's a clarity that comes when that happens. Wow. That's, that's awesome. That's super, super intriguing and interesting. It makes me want to, I'm like, okay, what's my energy? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And I, I use crystals during my sessions too, because different uh-huh. Um, match up with the different chakras and so you know if I feel a blockage like we were talking about in the throat before turquoise is is a great uh, is a great stone to use in that area Um, and and I also have a pendulum that I use that can show how open or closed each of the each of the chakras are Wow. Okay. So you you kind of answered this question already um, because I could hear and see the passion that you know, talking about um, your clients feeling that energy for the first time. But what else do you love about what you're doing? I know that in your bio, you talk about joining your yoga with your Reiki practice. And, you know, so what, what do you, what do you love? What wakes you up in the morning about doing what you're doing? Yes, I, I love helping women who feel overwhelmed come back to that feeling of, of being self-assured and empowered because I truly believe that we all have the answers within us, mm-hmm. but sometimes we need help accessing those answers okay. and really seeing, seeing someone go from that state of, you know, frenzy or, you know, just like that, that exhausted energy um, to then opening their eyes after a session and feeling, 
feeling renewed and feeling, you know, that sense of, of calm and, and inner peace, that really, that really brings me joy, helping, being able to help women in that way. That's awesome. I love that. Um, how long do you, would you say that one session, is it different for every person now how long it works as far as that feeling of renewed energy and peace? Um, yes, I, I would say it, it depends. Um, you know, it also depends like what you go and do right after the session too, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to, you know, jump right back into that, um, that whatever was causing you that stress to begin with, then maybe it won't last as, as long because it is, it, it's a lot about helping people, helping women realize that they can feel good. And then also, the, you know, the next part is then really taking those steps mm-hmm. to, to continue that feeling and knowing that you can live your life from this, this place of state uh, and state of calm and well-being and yeah. that it doesn't have to, you know, I feel like so, so often, especially as moms, it's like, oh, it's normal. It's normal for us to be going in a million different directions and have a million balls in the air and being, do, and doing everything for everyone else. And it, you know, and I get that as a mom, you know, especially when with my husband on deployment, yes, but, you know, sometimes you are the only one to have to do all of these things. But at the end of the day, you still have the ability to take the time for yourself. It's a choice. Yeah. And, and we need to choose that more, more often, even if it's not always easy, but making the time for yourself is absolutely imperative. I a hundred percent agree with that. And, you know, a lot of times we're our own worst enemies because the things that we do put on our plate, we feel like we have to do it, but it is actually a choice. Um, you know, we have a rule in our house that each kid gets one activity outside of school because if they're, you know, I have three kids, if they're in two, three activities, and I'm going in 5 million different directions, that's, that's, I have myself to blame for that a little bit. Um, And so, yeah, I like that you were saying it, you know, it depends on the activity that you're going to go back to. But I think, from my understanding of what you're saying is if you, once you get to that place of calm, you maybe can realize what, what was it that got you out of that calm state so then maybe you can avoid those things or maybe you can think about them a little bit differently yeah and really how simple it is like it i think we we overcomplicate things It, it literally can be as easy as sitting down for five minutes and closing your eyes and focusing on your breath Mm -hmm. and and giving yourself that gift when you recognize that you're in that state of crazy, when the kids come home from school and you're trying to make dinner and you are trying to help with homework and you're trying to still answer work emails, you know, and just being like, okay, like I'm at my limit. Like, that's it. I'm going to go into the other room and I'm going to sit down for five minutes and I am just going to breathe. Yeah. And, and you, I mean, you can be amazed at how different you, you can feel by just taking that time to just sit and be because we don't do that enough. No, and you know, I actually, when my kids were younger, I used to put myself in mommy timeouts. <laughs> but I knew that they were safe, and you know, I could leave them whatever, wherever they were at in the house uh, and didn't have to be within, you know, eye shot of them all the time or earshot. I would, I would literally be like, mommy will be back. I need to go take myself for a timeout because I could sense myself. I was going to say something or do something that I didn't want to do because I was going to regret it later. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm the same way. I call it, I have a little uh, meditation area upstairs in my bedroom. I'm like, mommy's going to her meditation station. <laughs> Leave me, me, you know, just. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how do you feel like your profession of meditation and energy work has impacted your family? It, it really has helped my kids as far as anxiety. My son is definitely deals with, with anxiety and Mm -hmm. the breathing work. I I do a lot of breathing exercises, of course, when teaching yoga, but it's something that I incorporate into not only my meditations, but also when I'm doing Reiki. And so teaching simple breathing exercises has really 
has really helped him or simple meditations. Like one of my favorites um, that I do with my son is with your, with your fingers. And so if you take your um, forefinger and your thumb together, and then you move your middle finger and your thumb together, and then your ring finger and your thumb together, and then your pinky and your thumb together. And so you, you're simply, you know, moving each finger down to the thumb one at mm -hmm. a time. And then when you do that, you can, you can also come up with a little mantra. So I like to, I like to do peace begins within me, peace mm -hmm. begins within me. And, um, and, you know, I've told him, you know, he can come up with his own and he did. And so he's like, he, he says, I am big and strong. I'm big and strong. And I, and it's something that you can, you know, do keep your hands underneath your desk. Nobody needs to know that you're doing it. Nice. And um, that was a, that was a, that was something I taught him on the first day of school this year was, you know, cause he was nervous about the new teacher about, you know, just going to school and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so when he came home, I asked him, how did it go? And, you know, did you use the meditation? And he said, he said, yes. And it really helped. And so that made me feel really good that, he was able to, you know, calm himself down and, and not be as anxious with a simple exercise like that. So yeah, you're instilling a coping mechanism yeah. in him. Um, how, how old are your children? Six and eight. Oh, those are fun ages. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I do believe that there are ages where they start recognizing what other people around them are doing or not doing or think, you know, they're caring more about what they're thinking so this is when something like that would definitely come into, I have, um, my middle child suffers from anxiety over different things. And we definitely try to breathe and put our, you know, let's get back to a, this is, you know, it's okay to feel this way, but why are we feeling this way? And, um, you know, focusing on, on herself for a little bit. And I didn't even know that I was helping her with <laughs> you know, things like that. So yeah, yeah. or even like a, a fun one that I'll tell them to do is just name, you know, name something that you can see, name something that you can feel that, um, that you can hear You're using all of your senses, really engaging yeah. all of your senses. And that can help, you know, that can help all of the crazy thoughts that you might be having all the swirling ideas to just kind of blend away and then come back to that feeling of like, okay, I'm in control. Like these are things that I can like see, feel, touch, right. taste. Yeah. Tangible, tangible items is, a, yeah. Exactly. Um, so how can moms that are listening move towards finding balance and incorporating, incorporating meditation into their own lives? I think it can be, you know, I, I especially for moms with young kids that really, you know, are, because it's constant thing I get is that they, there isn't enough time. There's not enough yeah. time in the day, but it can be as simple as going on a walk. Like, uh, and when you're out on that walk, focusing on maybe all the sounds that you hear, hearing the birds chirping, hearing the cars passing you by, or maybe it's focusing on different, um, something that you can see all the blue things, you know, giving yourself something to focus on. It's a, it's a type of, you know, moving meditation, absolutely possible. Um, so simple, simple things like that, or, or even um, before you're going to bed at night when you're laying there and breathing, feeling the sensations of your breath, noticing your chest rise and your, and your uh, chest fall, or um, feeling the breath as it you know, moves through the nose and down the throat, paying attention to those types of, of details, even if it's just for a few minutes before you fall asleep can, can really be soothing. What I'm hearing again is that we overcomplicate things and we think that we need to have this like huge amount of blocked out time in order to really get, engage with self-care. But, but you're saying that we could do this in just a few minutes. Oh yeah. You can do it in the pockets of your day. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it's, it's not, it's not about taking hours of time and sitting like in a monastery, like a monk, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people think like, Oh, meditation, I cannot do that. Or the other thing is that not, if they don't have enough time, it's that they can't turn off their thoughts. That's, yeah. that's another one that I get a lot. And it's not, meditating is not about turning off your thoughts. Um, it is, it is about focusing on the breath, being in the moment, you know, the thoughts are going to come and that's okay. And you can just acknowledge them and say, okay, that's a thought. 
Um, or if it's a feeling, uh, you know, a lot of people when sitting still for a period of time, they're like, oh, my back hurts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so noticing if it's, if it's a feeling or if it's a thought and be like, okay, that's a thought. Okay, that's a feeling. And then every time just coming back to the breath. And it's a practice. It is absolutely a practice. I, I mean, I would also recommend, you know, there's, there's tons of um, guided meditation apps out there that are especially helpful for beginners because it gives you something to follow. You're following somebody's voice and they're, you can concentrate on that and what they're telling you to do. Right. Um, so it's another great place to start too. It's funny, we teach that in our childbirth course because if somebody is um, aiming to have a natural childbirth, we teach relaxation. And when I first had my son, who's now 15, um, I used to think relaxation just meant kind of laying in my bed and either getting a massage or going to sleep, you know. Um, but it takes concentration. And I think that's where we can sometimes get overcomplicated. You know, it takes concentration. But I love how you said recognize it and then come back mm -hmm. to the moment. Um, yeah, I can it's just like labeling it. It's just labeling it in your mind and then bringing your attention back to where you want it to go, which is, which is the breath. And I, sometimes I'll think of the breath as, um, as a light or even a mist and envision mm -hmm. that as it fills my body. Just that visualization is, is helpful for me personally. Um, and then, you know, letting that, letting that go. And then, you know, mm -hmm. inhaling, light and love, exhaling anything that's not serving me. That's know, negative. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, so you call yourself a sound healer. Can you explain what that is and how you use it? Um, and maybe the ways that that provides healing for others. Yeah, absolutely. So I play a crystal alchemy singing bowl that is made from 99.99% .99 quartz. And quartz is a conductor of sound. Quartz is something that's used in antenna and really anything that's going to be sending sound waves across the air. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually have, I don't know if everybody else can see this, but this is my crystal alchemy singing bowl ah. here. Um, and so quartz helps to just, you know, just like Reiki, just like yoga, it helps to move energy. Um, and there, the way that it, the way that it works is that at our smallest molecular being, we mm -hmm. are vibrating. And so the vibration from the bowl syncs up with the vibration of your body to really bring you into this state of, of calm and, um, and zen. And the first time I ever went to a sound bath, it was such a transformative experience for me that uh, I, was, I stayed after to speak with the, with the teacher and... I was like, I don't know what that was, but I need more of that in my life. That just made me feel so good. And, um, and she shared with me that listening to these bowls for, if, if this was done in some scientific study, listening to these bowls for 30 minutes or more is equivalent to taking five milligrams of Valium. It just like, wow. does, yeah, it just does that to your body. And there's a, there's a book that is written by Dr. Mitchell Gaynor, who is an oncologist. Um, and it's about how he has incorporated using these bowls with his patients and how his patients, you know, have improved their, you know, how they feel, um, their, their pain levels, as well as, you know, I guess their thought process on the healing process from dealing with cancer. And um, it's, it, it really is incredible to see, uh, to see how people react to the bowl. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll play it, I play it during my yoga classes, and then I also play it during Reiki sessions um, and meditations and stuff. And most recently, I, I played it uh, during yoga last week, at class and there was a new student in class and she came up to me afterwards and she was like what what was that <laughs> I was like oh that I like to call my magic bowl you know like, oh, that's my crystal bowl and she said she's like that was powerful she said I really could feel that in my chest and it's just really cool to see how it resonates you know with different people and how it really does help to move the energy along to mm -hmm help you come back to that that place of of calm and peace because that is what I am all about <laughs> yeah yeah we need more of that in our lives that's for sure the, yeah. the calm and peace 
Um, are there any specific ways that a sound healing treatment might affect a pregnant or postpartum mother? I mean, I think it would just help. I wish I knew about it right after I had my kids. I'll tell you what, because it, it really, for me personally, just puts me into this such a state of calm and, and relaxation that everything else kind of drifts away. And I think especially as a new mother, there's just so many thoughts that are always swirling and worries and, you know, am I doing this right? Is my baby okay? You know, that like, even if you can get out for just a little bit and just, or even not listen to a recording and, mm -hmm. you know, there's all sorts of recordings of these on, on YouTube um, and just see what, see what that does, see how it makes you feel, you know, and just allow yourself that gift of, of laying down and just being and, and feeling what the music does for you. Yeah. You know, being pregnancy, I would say, and postpartum, uh, like you said, are, are, they're high anxiety times, you know, especially for a new mom. Well, I would say even, you know, after having three, I had different anxieties with all three pregnancies, um, whether I was anxious about the birth process or I was anxious about not, you know, can, feeling my baby move or um, what was I putting in my body? What, you know, if I craved, I don't know, let's, a Coke, what was that going to do? You know, the, just all these things that you put on yourself um, and it just creates that anxiety and all those thoughts just compound one another. I would, I think, at least for me, they did. Yes. And oftentimes after you have the baby, you have a whole new set of worries. You're like, okay, I made it through the birth and everything went fine. And now I have this, this baby and am I going to be a good mom? And how is, or how is the sibling going to, interact with the baby and all these worries but if you take time to acknowledge them and then um move on or bring like you said bring back to center i could definitely see how that would help yeah it's and mu music always is so powerful you mm -hmm. know and this is just it's just another way to just let let yourself go and and be in the moment yeah have you noticed a difference um, maybe going through this deployment than you did the last one 15 years ago? Oh, yeah. This one is much harder because the, we've been through – this is our third deployment. The first oh. two were before we had kids. So this is the first deployment with kids. And um, – it's, you know, obviously before I only had to worry about myself and now having to worry about the kids and how they're dealing with it and how they're missing, missing my husband. And, um, it's definitely, it's definitely been, been challenging for sure. But we, uh, we call ourselves the triangle because it's just uh -huh. the three of us. And, um, and I remember the first time I said that, I'm like, oh, it's, I, I don't even know why I said that. I said, <laughs> we're going to be like a triangle, you know, and we'll be leaning on each other and, and we'll be strong. And then my son said to me, mom, did you know that the triangle is the strongest shape? And I was just like, ah, you know, I just like started crying. <laughs> oh, but yeah, we just, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's been, it's been a, a journey for sure, but I am, I'm grateful. I can, I can honestly say that I'm, I'm grateful for everything that this deployment has taught me, not only about myself, but how strong my kids are and how strong we really are as a, as a family unit. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I hope that the time will go a little bit faster for you. Um, <laughs> that you guys can get, you know, be back together as a family of four um, pretty quickly, but uh, in closing, is there anything else that you would like to share about you or your motherhood journey or your practice to find balance in your life? Oh, I just think it's so important to remind moms how crucial it is to really take that time for yourself and that self-care is not selfish because yeah. sometimes we, you know, we think that like, Oh, taking time for myself. I, I can't do that. That's selfish. It's really not because when you take care of yourself, you show up as the best version of yourself and your children are absolutely going to benefit from that. So mm -hmm. just remember that in the, in those moments of crazy that you deserve, you absolutely deserve to take 
a little mommy time out and, and just go be, whether that's, whether that's reading a book, whether that's going for a walk or, you know, or doing a meditation, whatever it is for you, you know, find what works for you because it's different for everybody. You know, I find it funny that we have such a hard time with self-care because we want it for everyone else. Why do we not want it for ourselves? Exactly. Um, you know, it, it is hard. It's, it's just, you know, mom, I, moms are just built to uh, be sure. worried about everybody else. And it's, and it's easy to, you know, end up at the bottom of that list. But yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so, because you'll notice a change in yourself. I mean, I see it in myself when I don't take the time for me. I am snapping at my kids more. I am, you know, not eating as healthy as I want to be. Or right. you know, it's like everything starts to fall out of line when I'm not taking that time for myself. So absolutely. I just want to help as many women realize that they need to, they need to do that for themselves. Yeah. And, and in turn, they're doing it for everybody around them. It's, exactly. it's kind of like when you, if you let yourself get hangry, <laughs> then <laughs> nobody wants to be around you. But if you eat something and then you can think better and you can be nicer to everyone around you. <laughs> so true. It's so true. Got to take care of mama. <laughs> exactly. So Lauren, where can our listeners find out more and um, where can they follow you on social media? Sure. So you can find me on um, Instagram at Lauren Nicole, and that's only with one N and the O is a zero. Okay. And um, I am also on Facebook and it's uh, Facebook slash or Facebook.com slash uh, Lauren Bonville, and that's F-O-N-V-I-E-L-L-E. Um, and then if anybody is interested in uh, learning more about my program or just connecting, I'm, I'm all about just authentically chatting with people about where they are and um, they can, they can reach out to me at uh, talkwithlauren.com. Awesome. I love that. Thank you so much. And we will definitely uh, share your um, social media handles and uh, let, let people know how to get in touch with you. Amazing. Um, Thank you so much for having me. I love this conversation today. Yeah, it was wonderful. I learned a lot and I'm excited to learn more. So thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Honest Talk Radio. If you'd like to come on the show and have an honest conversation about connecting, relating, and encouraging others, contact me at hello at honesttalkinternational.com. Again, you can contact me at hello at honesttalkinternational.com. Until next time.